Hello, welcome to Minitrials, my name's Stuart and welcome to a quick look at some 15mm Normandy buildings that I've picked up for use with Flames of War. Now, I've um, ordered from Empires of War beforehand, um, I've got some buildings for Napoleonic period in the same scale or epic scale so very very close um, and they're essentially pre-coloured you can choose unpainted but pre-coloured pre-painted miniatures and even offer um, a building surface on on some of them now they're just little drop down menus on their website where you can choose whether you want them painted or on, on assembled etc etc i suppose with the demise of foreground um, the kind of pre-color, pre-painted um, MDF buildings are um, a little bit harder to find these days. There's definitely a le little bit less choice. Uh, you can see from the website that they do a, a few different scales and there's quite a, a wide range of different things. Now they're not quite as detailed as the, the foreground buildings if you were familiar with those, but they're pretty good and for um, a lot cheaper than foreground it used to offer for theirs. Um, I'll just grab one of a set of the Spanish buildings that I purchased um, to use for Peninsula War, um, but also used for Mediterranean um, theatres in World War II as well. I have airbrushed in a little bit of shadow, a little bit of shading, and I've put a little bit of mud texture around the bottle, bottom, but only very, only a very slight amount. So the colours you get are flat, um, but things like the roofs. Um, are really good and you can build them so that they're all removable and things if you want and they do have coloured insides as well though they're generally kind of just sort of like whitewash kind of colours. So they do do sets um, or just individual buildings. Um, I've already got some buildings that I can use um, particularly some 15 millimeter stuff for Napoleonic. So I've got um, La Haye Saint and uh, and even some American Civil War ones. So the Manassas House made by um, Sarissa also doesn't look out of place on its own as a, as a Northern European farmhouse. And then the like, La Haye Saint and, and the other things that are made by Sarissa for epic battles Waterloo. Funnily enough, the buildings in their separate components make nice farmhouses and things for, for Normandy as you'd expect. So I'm not going to do a full review of all of these individually but I'll just open up a packet to give you a bit of an idea of what they're like before I build them then I'll come back with a video and then actually you can see them all built. So you do get some quite basic instructions inside um, they generally work um, I found by following them before they generally made sense and they're not overly complicated um, and as you can see this one's come off the the frame a little bit um, but they're all slightly pre-coloured so there's your roof sections that's probably based on what i built before your inside walls um, and this will be your your outside walls and things as well but i'll know fully when i actually follow the instructions and stick it all together um, but but that's what you get pretty typical mdf kits and i would say it was sort of um in the in the higher echelon in terms of quality compared to some of the really really cheap ones out there um but the value is a real nice balance so what i'll do is i'll, I'll get them all built and i'll come back to the video and show you them all built and I'll, I'll you know i'll give some feedback on how well they went together and there we are all built uh, i'm going to go back and do a little bit more to these before i end the video so i just want to um, do that little bit of airbrushing that I like to do to just add a little bit more to them and maybe add a little bit of texture around the edge. Uh, made a couple of mistakes. Um, I used a bit of PVA and I've also used some super glue as well just because I'm impatient. Um, definitely use a good PVA if you're going to rather than sort of the kids stuff that takes a long time to dry. Um, but I think they're pretty good overall. Um, they're useful in terms of they've got removable um, roofs and removable floors so you can fit stands of models inside them as well which is quite cool um i'm just a fan of them they're um, really good value and they're uh you know they, they as a basic kit the basic coloring of them is pretty good to be honest with you there's nothing wrong with popping that straight on the table now and they don't take much longer to assemble than a standard mdf building and painting mdf can be a bit of a pain sometimes um and I'm, I'm a big fan of the scale of them as well and i'll come back once i've um done that last bit of painting and, and talk about it a little bit more um but they're um yeah they're good little buildings i was pleased with the ones i got before and um, i'm definitely pleased with these ones um, I might get a few more whole ones. Now I've got the destroyed ones. I actually prefer prefer these in some ways. And when we talk about what I'm using at the table at the moment for, for World War II stuff, um, I definitely think I want a few more of these. But, but I'll leave you momentarily. I will go away and spend about 15, 20 minutes um, airbrushing in some sort of charred black look and some, some sort of a bit of weathering. And um, I'll come back and I'll show you what they look like after that. 
So what we're going to do is use a little bit of rattling grime, which is one of the new contrast colours, and just through the airbrush. And um, you can airbrush gently straight on to these buildings. Build it up slowly so you don't soap and saturate the area too much. And this is a kind of a blackish brownish colour. I just wanted to show where the shell may have hit. There may have been some fire afterwards and it would have would have burnt the wood. Once that dries, it gives you quite a nice matte finish. And you can also do it um, around the, the edges of these buildings here. Give that kind of charred look rather than that kind of MDF card look. It just really quickly takes them to another level. And the other thing you can do with buildings like this very quickly is just add a little bit of dirt around the bottom. Um, I'm going to use some Garak Sewer, which is also one of the new contrast colours. And it really is a, a case of just building a bit of a tide mark around, around the bottom where passing traffic, uh, whether that be tanks and jeeps and trucks and things, or even just foot, um, will have added some detail in. Really incredibly simple, but it just means that when they sit on the table, they blend into the environment a little bit better. And there we go, that's with the, the very, very quick kind of two color airbrushing on them. Um, sometimes I'll add a little bit of um, texture to the bottom, um, but I didn't want to do that too much of these because I want to fit nicely in rural and in city areas, depending on what table setup I do. But it doesn't add loads, but it just adds a little bit to sort of tie them into the, the battlefield a little bit. And you'll see with the, uh, now these are dried out, just makes a lot of difference in my opinion to the, the charred sort of wood rafters and things that would have been obviously not bare MDF. Um, and the pre-coloured paint, you know, pre-coloured sheets, which are on the outside of the buildings are perfect, but those bits that just show the MDF, just that tiny little bit of extra work with the airbrush really, really makes a difference. But these didn't take very long at all. I think I assembled all um, seven buildings in about three hours, and then it's been about 20 minutes, half an hour on top to do the airbrush, airbrushing. So maybe four um, hours tops, and I've got uh, five sort of ruined buildings and these two little townhouses and, and like I said I'm going to pick up some more of these. I did say I'll come back to scale. Um, so these are obviously 15 millimeter scale, they sell different ranges. Um, I'm just going to grab over a couple of Sarissa buildings and I'm a big fan of Sarissa stuff. Now these are un, these were unpainted, I painted these myself. This is the Manassas house for the for their American Civil War range which they did um, in conjunction with Warlord Games for Epic Battles, American Civil War. And I thought I'd use this for some, some Normandy games. You can just about get away with it for that style of building. And, um, you, see, and you can see scale wise, these ones are very much true 15 mils, are quite on the large side. If you just look at the size of the windows and the doors and things, um, you can get away with both on the table and they work fine together. But the, the slightly smaller profile, I suppose, if we use this one as a comparison, um, the slightly smaller profile of, of these buildings, and I appreciate this is supposed to be a European building, which are often a bit smaller than, than, than American buildings anyway, but the slightly smaller profile still fits in really, really well with 15 mil miniatures, but also takes up less space on the table. And we all know what table real estate's like in terms of you want to represent a town on a, on a gaming table and sometimes it takes up far too much space. This is part of La Haye Saint from Sarissa as well. And again, you can see the same thing in terms of, they're just on the chunkier side and, and yes, it works, but um, these look better, at least next to the Flames of War miniatures that I've been um, been working on in terms of scale. So I think I'm gonna predominantly use these ones. Um, anyway, I'll show you a few pictures of them on the table. Um, so you can see what they look like in the context with a, with a mat down and some, some other scenery and things around them. Um, this is said, it's not really a review or an advert. I bought these myself. It's, I don't know the people at, at, at Empires at War. Um, I just wanted to do a quick video and, and, and show other gamers what they were like, because I'm, I'm a fan of them. And I know that there's a bit of a foreground sized hole for um, pre-painted stuff. And I know that MDF buildings are often a very affordable way for war gamers to get a lot of buildings on the table. Um, and then if you're someone like me who's 
spend a lot of time painting armies and things as much as I love doing terrain. The fact that these are slightly pre-painted, you know, they are pre-coloured and you can use them straight away, um, saves me loads and loads of time. And then the fact that I can come in and just do that really quick work with the airbrush, just to make that even that bit better, um, in my opinion, of course, um, then yeah, um, the, the time's fantastic and it, you know, a few hours and I've got a good little amount of buildings. I'll probably pick up another um, five to 10 of the actual sort of houses, the non non blown up ones at times. So I've got a little bit more of a, of a range to play with, but um, I'm really happy with these. Anyway, hopefully, that's, hopefully you found that interesting. Um, I'll probably file this with the, the World War II 15 millimeter stuff that's, that I'm doing on the channel at the moment. But if you've found this bizarrely and you haven't seen the channel before, um, do check out the other videos. There's, there's lots of sort of 15 mil stroke epic scale stuff in Napoleonic's American Civil War and now World War II. Um, but there are other things as well, including lots of painting tutorials and stuff. So if you, if you, if you like what you see, and consider give subscribing to the channel, give the video a little like, it really, really helps me out. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you soon.